five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. When America's space program was young, it was a high risk, high reward operation. Astronauts like Deke Slayton and others were originally test pilots. Ground processing relied on test pilots of a different kind to evaluate performance, redesign hardware, and schedule maintenance and launch prep on the fly. Okay, all flight controllers, go now, go for landing. Retro, go. Fido, go. Guidance, go. Control, go. Telcom, go. GNC, go. Ecom, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle Houston, you're a go for landing, over. America's vision to explore the new frontier of space made the risks acceptable and brought the rewards within reach. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Since then, a series of heroic, one-of-a-kind achievements has matured into an industrial process. NASA conceived the shuttle to deliver regularly scheduled payloads into space in order to build space stations, factories, even colonies. But the idea that vehicles would be reusable was a radical notion in and of itself. The agency's ability to keep four shuttles repaired, maintained, and on a regular launch schedule was untested. A typical orbiter processing flow through the horizontal phase of the process, it takes 75 to 80 days, typically. And we have in the range of about 1,500 work tasks that we actually perform. Uh, that's, that's broken down into some 22 different subsystems. But on a day-to-day -day basis, we have a lot of changes that we have to make. It used to be um, all manual tape laid, was what we called it. It was virtually laid tape on a piece of paper. And uh, each job would be represented with a, a different kind of tape. By the time that uh, you got the, the product completed, it had already changed. So that's where the computer has really come into a play, because we can come up with a, uh, a realistic schedule that's workable on time. Making it all work required the development of intelligent systems to optimize logistics, provide wide access to data, and respond to changing objectives and circumstances. If we can take uh, an in-flight anomaly or a mission problem while the orbiter's in flight, plug the problem into the system, uh, then show the impacts, violations, and conflicts, and show the effect of the rest of the schedule prior to the orbiter ever landing. Recently, applications like these have come down to earth. They can now be licensed for commercial use, part of NASA's new commercial technology agenda. NASA has to be more pertinent to the general public in whatever we do. Uh, the taxpayer, if they can see a benefit in the uh, commercial world that we have invested R&D dollars that have helped them help their standard of living improve life or the quality of life for them, they will see that their money is not spent uh, just on shooting rockets into space, but has actually helped them in their everyday life. The agency is placing a strong emphasis on forming R&D partnerships, allowing the development and customization of its technologies to meet the needs of business. NASA may then acquire the new products upon completion, leveraging its original investment. One such agreement exists with Red Pepper Software of San Mateo, California. Founder and President Monty Zwieben formerly served as Assistant Chief of Artificial Intelligence for NASA. We performed basic research at NASA Ames, but we always did so in the context of real-world problems. We chose the space shuttle ground processing problem because it was a very difficult scheduling problem. It was mission critical, and it was extremely costly for the agency. We've looked at the way people solve schedules and tried to encapsulate that inside the scheduling algorithms. The Space Shuttle Ground Processing Scheduling System, or GPSS, reflects the difficulty of shuttle refurbishing. The process can anticipate only 50% of the work in advance. The schedule must be consistently revised to reflect the work that is discovered after the job is underway. GPSS was first tried during the processing of the shuttle Endeavour before its first flight. Managers thought it worked so well that the program soloed on a Columbia mission later the same year. 
it is now the primary scheduling method for all four orbiters. There's a number of benefits. First, obviously the tasks are uh, resident in the computer and any changes we make to them, you don't have to start over, like on a piece of paper. And if I move one, it'll move uh, all the associated tasks that have been tied to that. So the time savings is tremendous. Since the Ideal Corporation produces mass customized goods at the lowest possible cost, Red Pepper saw the potential in tailoring GPSS software for commercial use. The company expanded the program, addressing it to manufacturing and materials management. Now known as the Response Agent Supply Chain Software, the program is exception-based, using real-time response agents to identify problem areas, like short or excess inventory, over-allocated capacity, or orders scheduled to ship late. It's important that people have access to tools which provide quick, fast, and accurate what-if scenarios. To be able to take input from local data sources, massage the data locally, and then to see the results of that. The response agent is an in-memory application. It extracts data from transactional systems into memory, assembles it, then creates plans, schedules, and evaluations. What Red Pepper allows you to do is basically state the relative importance of the various business drivers. And when it determines that you can't satisfy your customer demand with existing inventory and based on existing supplier capacity, it will highlight to you what your exceptions are. And it will also try to resolve as many exceptions as possible using your stated priorities. I think in a global manufacturing environment such as Sun has, there's literally millions of data elements that need to be considered. It might be vendor delivery of product, maybe final build of product, customer orders. Really, the, the number of possible inputs is almost limitless. The manufacturing landscape has changed dramatically. U.S. companies must contend with unprecedented global competition and revolutionary technological change. Distributed systems and in-memory applications are interlocking elements in the development of flexible manufacturing networks. Such technologies developed for America's space program help ensure that businesses can reach their highest potential right here on Earth. <laughs>